good, clean well water. Which is surprisingly uncommon. You guys, folks who support us, are there for us in good times. Back, cheer, cheer us on in good times. Uh, pray and give us well wishes in bad times. Companies like Redman. This is Rila. Thank you for sending this to me, Redman. This is a uh, electrolyte. We've been doing this for 15 years. Been cooking at home longer than that. We've got a pretty well equipped kitchen. Look at all those jars we've collected. Uh, a crock, uh, instant pot, a mixer. We even have an ice cream maker. That one took a while to save up and get. Way back in the day. Actually, we got rid of our. Remember that, Rebecca? We got. We were. Yeah. Making our own bread. We had our own wheat grinder. We, we sold got, that and got the ice cream maker. We got rid of the wheat grinder because it took me probably a year to save up to buy the wheat grinder and mixer. Yeah. And I didn't really like the mixer. It was a Bosch mixer, and uh, so I sold it all together as a set on it. On, uh, yeah. Craigslist, and then I took that money and bought the ice cream maker. Gideon has interrupted this broadcast for some yogurt. He will not give up. Come on, come on, Gideon. You're coming with me. You're going to help me get it for you. Out here, Mucho Freezers. This is where I should also make the point. You know, today's video is on our strengths, so it may seem like we're bragging. No, we're just analyzing. Tomorrow is on weaknesses. Here it is. So it looks like. Okay. Pretty soon we're going to make more yogurt. What you'll find though is sure, our strengths, we have a strength in that we have a lot of these freezers, like seven or something, and they're all mostly full of our homegrown meat. But depending on freezers, well that could be a, a weakness. I'm just going to put that little memo out here on the top. Like, It's a strength that we have all these forests because we can get firewood. We'll never want for firewood, but we don't have pasture. So just with that, keep that in mind that I very well realize, like Garth Brooks says, everything is a blessing and a curse. I like the, uh, the woods because it feels very protected. Like if this was all open and more flat and we could use it all, it wouldn't feel so... You're a true Easterner, honey. People who come from the West Coast, they feel... Uh, suffocated or claustrophobic in the density of the mountains and the woods but when we go out west well I feel exposed I don't know what I'm hiding from Rebecca always laughs at me get me the mixer bro see we even have a mixer and it's not even a mixer it's a, it's an immersion blender no, that is a mixer, you're right. But I don't say immersion blender. We've got that. We're ready to uh, defend if some, uh, well, like we had a raccoon or something a while back that was dysentery. So it was acting crazy and it was just being nuts. And so sometimes you gotta take care of things like that. Or harvest animals. And that's not something you always have when you start out homesteading. It's very basic. It's a very Where basic do we plug up this? Uh, need. Let's put it over here. This has got to be one of my biggest uh, strengths. They also hold you back, all this kinds of thing, but overall, certainly a category of strengths. It's our homemade yogurt. We just mix, even then, the cream of the yogurt rises to the top, so we're gonna mix it all in. Kids are like investments. As far as the farm help is concerned, they pay off in the long run. This is my number one strength. <laughs> there would be no Justin Rose without Rebecca Rose. My whole business is can be concentrated in just one little corner. I understand and enjoy business and uh, know how to market and use the technologies we have today. I'm appreciative of that. And everybody has a love and hate relationship with this thing, right? I got you. Why did we put that on a clean cloth, right? Let's not do that. Did you smooth it up? Yeah. Okay, let's get in the bowl. This thing, we just looked up the weather. Is it going to frost tonight? Papa, it's got leaf identification Papa, stuff on it. What? This. Just put it, what are you doing? What does that have to do with getting 
yogurt in a bowl. Uh, I needed to get off it. Let's, let's, let's put this in. There's a bowl right here, honey. Is that just too easy? That's just too oh, easy. I didn't see that. How are you? And just eating watermelon would have been really easy too. Grandpa would have killed for this. Had this out in the field, calculator. Uh, I talked to Mr. Google Pants, online forums, all these kinds of resources, videos. It's, it's insane what this is. Live broadcasting. I had copied the graph in my, uh, in my phone. Things your company does well. So things your farm or family does well. So that's good. We, we, we're on track. Cool. Qualities that separate you from competitors. Well, this is not a competition of homesteaders and families, so that doesn't really apply. Internal resources such as skill and knowledgeable staff. So gone already over the family. Well, there went one. Isn't that funny? I read that as a rune walked through. Big strength. Tangible assets such as intellectual property, capital property, technologies. Okay, so I'm on I'm on track here. Let's this one stop. takes care of all of our shopping needs. It would stack would be one, two, three, four. Yeah, and, and that's all. Seventy two eggs. And if we have more than seventy two eggs, then it's time to pass them on. Feed them to the pigs, sell them. Pass them on. Look. What? Could be one day. Oh yeah. Because we have fifty birds. They're giving us two dozen a day right now. Now they're gonna slow down. As winter keeps coming, light gets less. That's a huge strength. We have chickens just coming on lay, going into the fall. And we've replaced all our old ladies. So we have all efficient hens. Except one little mascot, Kai, out in the, out in the breakfast pot. Back to my electrolyte, I never finished that. I use warm water to mix in the, the salt and minerals and then catch in, catch the cold water. Let this represent health features throughout the house. My kettlebells over in the corner, our ice bath down in the uh, driveway. Oh gosh, this has gotta be one of our biggest strengths. We love to read. One day I'm gonna have to give you guys a tour of all this. My, our business section, kids book section, youth literature, some of my favorite section, like Swiss Family Robinson, Laura Ingalls Wilder, uh, Holes. Those are some fun books. We've got health, a health section. We've got a whole two shelves on farming. Uh, fiction, a true story, nonfiction. Nonfiction learning. Mm, I'm gonna have to give you guys a grand tour of this one day. Some books that we've ordered that are gonna be read. How about look, I'm doing pull up. Look good for you, babe. Good for you. Okay, Mr. Brown, you ready? I would say I'm in that sweet spot with age in my 40s. I finally feel like I'm grown up, but I'm still young enough and strong enough to carry the baby, get work done, still nimble. I'm no 20, but I don't think I would trade my 40s for my 20s. I kinda like my 40s. We've got cats that are really good mousers and really people friendly. See all this? Mucho huevos. That's why Rebecca was shopping for us a way to hold eggs that aren't egg cartons because we quickly run out of those since we're not buying eggs. Okay, I think you might want to get down. I was hoping outside would uh, make him happy. Will it? Will you get happy if we walk around? Okay, let's walk around outside. We built our coal frame yesterday from a chicken tractor just in time because it frosted today. The lettuce is safe. And secure. I mentioned Redmond's. Well, we've also got Kubota. That's a huge strength having this side by side and tractor. Uh, look and see if we've got persimmons in. They're usually in before it starts frosting. Is this one ready? Not quite. Let this represent our systems that we're dialing in. This an water valve replacement. We've got an amazing pole barn for winter 
deep bedding accumulation. Also a place for the pigs during the summer. Oh, we've got a boar. We've got a boar. Just want you to know, we're not just getting males because we think it's cute. We actually have a big sustain, uh, sustainability, uh, security stance. If we've got a, a boar and we've got a sow, she's got yet to grow up a little bit, two sows, we're continually in port, guys. Lots of wood chips, and I should say this, you know, been doing this for 15 years. Only got the pole barn last year, so everything comes in steps. Don't be intimidated by this video. These are our strengths. We dialed in a mineral feeding system for our animals. People forget that you need minerals for animals, and that eliminates the vet deal. Breeding rabbits, I don't know. Something fun for Lily to do. Maybe it'll work out, maybe it won't. Hey, in a place to store hay. What are you saying, big guy? I know this stuff can be kind of intimidating. Don't let it intimidate you. Remember, this wasn't all built in a day. It took me years. Just do what you can. Hopefully you're inspired to analyze your own farm and family and realize your own strengths. Tomorrow comes my weaknesses, so we'll talk about that then. Wood, lots of wood. Remember I said we had lots of forest? Well, we have lots of wood, and we have lots of wood stored and ready and super dry. We got a shop. Oh my goodness, you're gonna see that in action this winter. When I go to do all my homestead builds and perfect my plans. Like that one, that, that thing's amazing. You can pull that behind the machine or you can uh, move it, but by hand. This though, oh, oh. Wood boiler, heats the entire house, plus two hot water heaters, all wood. We have no heating bill in the winter. Another new but critical addition, a high tunnel. Great for our chickens and pigs in the winter. Great for tomatoes in the summer. We've gotta come in here and harvest these tomatoes and either can or freeze them. Lots of peppers. We have some established garden beds close to the house on nice flat land. That's gonna be a strength is that, you know, now we have this. We have this onion garlic curing rack. We have a compost sifter. That's a strength is that, and hopefully you get that from this is, you know, every day we're doing something on the front. We do our chores and then we do a little project and then suddenly you're walking around and being like, oh wait, I have a greenhouse. I have an onion rack. I don't have to build that again. I have a compost sifter. I have a stack of pallets collected. I have a nice stack of wood. Son's building a compost pile. A lot of times people get intimidated, me too, and they, they look at some what somebody else is doing and then, or you get intimidated for whatever reason, you just don't do anything. Well, that's not, that's not getting you there. Cummins generator. For years, we were just like this for a long-term power outage. We had, we also had, we did have one like generator you can get at Lowe's or something that we'd have to change out you know, get, get one freezer cool, switch it out, type of thing. Remember how I was saying children are investment? This one used to be just like that. Now he's making his own compost. Boom! Forgot to mention the front yard. Already established. Chicken run, built compost builder, and raised beds. Established and ready to go. Huge strength right there. So much food can be grown just right here in a concentrated space with not a lot of effort. Community center, that is the people barn. Community has to be, oh, we have such a strength there. We have lots of uh, friends in homesteading who also YouTube, so that's good to have. There's a lot in common there. Just a place to gather and just not feel so crazy about yourself. This has been one of the best things we've ever done, and, and we doubted it, but it's created so much opportunity uh, for, for fellowship and just strengthening of the soul. And of course, the shed, the stand for scalding pigs. Some of these are little things, some of these are big things, but they've happened over time. Oh my gosh, game changer to be able to have the butchering stuff constantly set up. Learned that from Polyface Farm. I mean, if we're butching hundreds of birds a year, 
this makes sense just because you don't have to spend half a day setting it up half a day tearing it down every time you butcher which can be like four or five times a year right here we've got our own remember i said we got a lot of forest well we've got our own sawed lumber we have more strengths than weaknesses on you think so yeah i actually i think i think i agree with you i think we're in that you know we've been doing this so long when we came back from the great american farm tour and started over in 2018 that was not the case. We had nothing. <laughs> uh, we had, well, we had nothing. Nothing. None of this I showed you guys. The only thing we really had was I had been great rotationally grazing before we left, and we had good pastures because of that. Uh, we had some perimeter fences, which we don't use anymore. They're gone. Uh, so really, that's all we had. Maybe an established garden. How do you think they look, Karun? You think they'll be ready? And week we 10 feed, days we have to feed them a lot <laughs> yeah so we've got them another we got them another king feeder out here from premier one they got two king feeders and a trough we got to really sock it to them because they do not look on pace part of it if i was down on the job you know i don't think they 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 probably didn't get food 24 7 this entire time now they didn't go hungry but they didn't get all you can eat buffet all the time it's frost they seem to be doing just fine, but they are burning more calories. They're burning more calories staying warm. We don't push it this far in the season with Cornish Cross. It's just that we lost 100 to a rat and we lost 40 to cold weather in the spring. I would say this is a big strength. A sea monster system. C as in Cornish Cross. Monsters, because they grow so fast. Two months. Guys, if, if anybody wants a quick strength get them a uh a poultry net this is a shocker knot from premier one kind of hard to get right now you could do regular poultry net maybe just wait and put the chicks out at four weeks instead of three weeks meat shaw a couple of feeders and a waterer if you did a hundred and, and a hundred survive you're gonna have 400 pounds of meat in your freezer in two months that's a big strength Knowing how to do this, having the supplies for this. I am on empty. Another huge strength. Off-road diesel. Well, can I get this off? For our Kubota utility vehicle. For our furnace. We use the furnace like early in the fall, like right now when we don't need to run the wood boiler all the time. And what else? Oh, the generator. We've got a long enough cord to run it down to the generator. And then you take that around there. Hold it just like that. This is just like a gas station. No going out and getting fuel for the farm. The farm truck, the truck comes here and fills this up. It'll do our tractor. That's good, that's enough. If Cornish Cross are a quick uh, strength, this is the long-term strength. One of our greatest strengths are these milk cows for sure. And the system we've we've developed. Milking and the mobile stanchion, they poop here. We just move on. That's my pet peeve, managing poop. I don't do it. I don't do it. I don't have to. They poop here. Well, the next day, we're going to be somewhere else. We've got the cows at sheep nets. They'll stay in much less than sheep nets. But... If we set up a net for cows, they're in it. We move them on, we move the sheep in it. We haven't had to set up a net for the sheep. We're raising the fat hens up. Well, you can't see them behind that tree, but pretty soon we can move them up here and they'll stay in the sheep net. And we'd have done three species on one net. We'd have done three species on just one water setup. It's just an amazing system. They eat different things. They eat each other's parasites. Dies off in their system. Together, these two are gonna give three, three and a half gallons of milk this morning. One of our biggest strengths is that we've been doing this a lot. It's experience. We've been doing this for 15 years. You can't buy that. You, just, you have to earn that. And it only comes with time, so I'm thankful we're on 
this side of it with more experience as opposed to less. But there's only one way to get experience and that's by doing. This is how old you are. It's never too late to start. We have to leave it with Josiah and Arun. Benjamin Roberts is here. I totally forgot, but no big deal. I saw it. I can go meet him. We're setting up a video podcast studio. You know, I have these guests from time to time. Wouldn't it be cool to sit down with them and <clears throat> make a podcast out of it? But also a video format, which I've already, do you guys know? I've already been piddling around with a podcast, the Justin Rhodes Show, mostly talking about behind the scenes business and health stuff, but I'm exploring different things. You kind of want it like standardized so that you can just come in here and you know what you're doing every Wouldn't time. Wouldn't it be cool if, this is kind of what I think, and you might have a different idea, but yeah, yeah, so maybe if we have a certain spot, we could tape where everything goes so that we can pick it up. But wouldn't it be cool if Rebecca and I could like sit right here and Gus could yeah. sit there yeah. and we just have a coffee, a, a coffee table conversation. Mm -hmm. I was gonna try to see like, what's the simplest way we could do this? Yeah, that, I appreciate the best, that's appreciated. You know? yeah. We're well into this, getting it set up real nice. He's got us some mic stands. I like it. Freeze up our arms. Uh, we're trying to decide, do we put an arm on this light? for this angle of camera, or do we just shoot with the stand right there? Is this where you said you would want the camera? Something like. Yeah, it looks like maybe the camera stand there is a little weird. Yeah, I was really hoping to avoid it, but now, we're, but I do think that the arm is just gonna be necessary. You just bring the whole thing down, and you take this softbox off, mm -hmm. and then you just leave the arm up. Okay. Uh, if, if you know, if, yeah. if you want to just kind of put it in the corner. Yeah. Um, and I can show you how to maybe kind of like make it a little smaller, yeah. so that you can just bring it out. The arm's already on there. You lift it up, have it go farther out, and then you maybe you just get a ladder and you just put the softbox on. Okay. That'd be the fastest way. I think we got it set it up. We got it figured out. We got our order list. Hopefully, the supply chain issues don't jack us up too much. First guest next week with Holistic Hilda. Today's episode of Burning Up Cooking Show. It's Taco Tuesday. What you got up your sleeve, Rebecca? Um, I'm making salsa right now, and then I'm gonna make some guac and. Are you making rice? Because that's trying to get going. Oh, that's a good idea. That's like. Whoops! And I didn't. I didn't. You gotta do think beans. about order here. What? You're gonna do rice or beans? You gotta get it going because it what? takes a while. Whoopsie. Okay, that's why we call it Burn It Up Cooking Show. This, this is real life cooking. This isn't no cookie cutter outline we've got planned. This is real life. In normal cooking shows, they'll have all the stuff laid out, cute little bowls, ready to go, measured out. That ain't happening here. We still got the lettuce in the bag. We're going to Chandler to help with it. We got kids interrupting. Mucho chicken off. Broth warming up. Oh, you need two of these. I should have done a bigger well, pan. Well, I'll just use water. It's fine. I usually do half water, half broth. Okay. Mucho butter. Minced garlic. You rinse it off to get like the starches off. See how it's like cloudy? But what is, what's the advantage in getting the starches off? I don't know. Uh, I never rinse Somebody it. will tell us in the comments. Rebecca's not sure she's a fan of rinsing the rice. Yeah, I don't know. For fried rice. It got water, you know, it's a water mix, so it kind of... It's water. Put some more. You guys wanted more of the beautiful one. Well, there you go. She's um, she's frying the rice, right? Yeah. And that's before you cook it. Yes. Spectacular. Spanish rice. We've got Delicious. two cups of broth ready. We've got another two cups. Yeah, you do such a good job there. I like this new schedule. We're eating big lunches. Me too. Rebecca's more energized. I'm more energized. Oh. Like, like, how did we let's miss just all go out. We're still vlogging at this point, so people get to see our our fair, our food fair. And I've been sleeping then, good. I've been tell? sleeping good. Have you been sleeping good? I've been sleeping okay. I have a baby. I've been maintaining my weight. You've been maintaining your weight. 
I'm nursing. <laughs> <laughs> no, um, and so then for, did you tell people what we're doing for dinner? Which we just do yeah, leftovers? Yeah, we just do leftovers. We so only amazing. cook one meal a day, really. I love it. And the kids can heat up the leftovers easy. Jonah's been doing that. Yeah. It's amazing. So that's huge, guys. Meals take up so much time. Cook one big one at lunch. Have okay. a little bit of leftovers for supper and, well, and mostly digested by the time you it's go to bed. don't have enough leftover, you will eventually have enough to do one big meal. Yeah. Like after a couple of days There's of leftovers. Left Does that make you sense? You have a hodgepodge. Yeah, a hodgepodge. Or her idea is well, they you want to have leftovers. Have some soups that are frozen. Yes, that was my other idea. I want, to, have a soup. I want to stockpile a bunch of soups in the freezer yeah. so that when... We don't have leftovers. We don't have anything to eat. I can do that. But now, like last night, I had some leftover sausage. I just made a frittata, and we had a salad and a frittata yeah. for dinner. Broth time. You can pour this one in too. It's pretty much there. So you pour in your water mix. You need help opening that jar? Oh, come on. Let the crippled man help you open the jar. Oh, come on. That's no fun. I can't. Uh, well, we'll have that soon, won't we? Or is this different? We're going to hopefully harvest our tomatoes soon. And maybe yeah. can. You want to can some tomatoes this time? I want. Some sauce? I would like. To. I did can some. Look at those avocados. Those are perfect. I know, they really are. I don't know if I've ever had such a perfect avocado. Nice. They didn't quite thaw out. That's the thing about eating a big meal at the lunch is you've got to remember to put stuff out the day before, not the day of. But no worries, we'll let it cook a bit on one side and then you flip it over and just scrape off the what's thawed out. Brown beef is ready. I want to show you guys another uh, ch game changer. Instead of mixing all our own seasonings, just buy the mix already. Taco seasoning, primal palette. Not sponsored or anything, but what I like about this is only one uh, chili powder, uh, Himalayan salt, paprika, black pepper, cumin, garlic. What is that? Five? Five ingredients where most mixes would have 20. I like that. And it's organic, of course. Put about a tablespoon per pound in this and it works out nice i'm having a load of gu that guacamole bit of sour cream cheese i am having a little bit of tomatoes and then lots of probably a pound of ground beef and a little bit of rice underneath there the beautiful one is having oh wow that's a much prettier plate side of rice guacamole lots of uh, is it pico de gallo yeah Pico de gallo and a kombucha with, oh yeah, and a little bit of lettuce on those tacos. Oh, siete taco shells. That's with corn though. It's, it's, just, it's got corn. It's just, uh, mm -mm. oh, it's don't even it's have cassava. corn. Oh, wow. Okay. They're grain free. Nice. Even the taco shells. Yes, it's all grain free. Nice. Well, besides the rice. <laughs> November. We'd have been home from the Great America Farm Tour for four years. Some of you don't even know about the Great America Farm Tour, but we're gonna do. So we're gonna celebrate with something really big. You guys ready for it? Oh, it was December when we came home, wasn't it? But November we were officially done, weren't we? Where am I getting November in my head? Just go with it, Becky. I think that <laughs> it was December. It was beginning of December. Really? All right. I don't know why I got November in my head, but we're gonna celebrate November with a Great America Farm Tour worldwide showing. Oh. <laughs> Is there gonna be like Sorry, it won't food? affect your life too much. Uh, we'll, we'll figure something out. The, you guys will have good food. This is not just an online showing. We'll have that, but we're going bigger than that. We have 77 hosts across the world that are willing to throw viewing parties. Most of them absolutely free. Sometimes there's costs because like they're throwing food parties or something, but absolutely free. This is my gift to create community. I had this idea after we came back from the Great America Farm Tour. Just didn't have the capacity to do it at that moment. But now we do. There are 77 hosts, 30 states are represented, a couple handfuls of countries. 
Uh, we got Spain, we got New Zealand, we got France, I think. So what I'm gonna have you do, what I'm gonna have Dan do here, is I'm gonna have him show you what it's look like. You're gonna go to the landing page, and Dan, you, you do the walkthrough with a screenshot for this. Go to the landing page, you go to that red button, and you register. And once you, you're joining my email list, and you can always opt out if you want, it's totally free. Register, and then once you register, scroll down, and we got Alabama, Arizona, Arkansas, California, Delaware, Florida, Georgia, Idaho, on and on and on, on and on, all 30 states, a bunch in Texas, four pl places in Canada, France, New Zealand, Portugal, and Spain. So, these are like real life parties. You go to people's houses and meet people near you. And I would highly encourage you guys, help. Let's, let's make this big, let's have this big, big worldwide viewing. I can't do it without you guys. Go sign up for this, find a host. You got an RSVP with these precious hosts. They're all from our, our Abundance Plus member area. Um, they're all precious hosts. You got an RSVP by November 1st. The party's on November 13th. And if somebody is not near you, which I encourage you to travel even if you, if you can, but if it's totally unreasonable, you can watch online. But either way, you're going to have to sign up. Uh, I would encourage you to do that. And, and have a good time with these folks. And to make it big, we've got to share this. We've got to get this word out. We don't just need a thousand people sign up. We need like 10,000 people. The Great American Farm Tour, it's a two hour documentary. You'll enjoy yourself, but I don't think it's about that. I think it's about a reason to get together. This will only work if we all get on board, we sign up, we, we RSVP, we invite friends, uh, we get the word out as best as we can. Share this, share, share this video or share the sign up page. Let's get the word out and let's get together and feel less lonely. Because the reality is we all feel a little crazy because our friends and family don't necessarily do this. But as I saw as Homesteaders of America, and people were meeting each other, and they were finding out they're really close to each other. It's good because you meet these people, and it makes you feel seriously less crazy, normal, right? Which we are, and it just strengthens you and encourages you. So, from the bottom of my heart, I, I hope and encourage you to get in on this. I think it's going to be a really big thing.